Hello and welcome to Pickles Garage. Today we're going to be working on freeze plugs, frost plugs, whatever you call them. Essentially what it does is it allows there to be some sort of escape for water that might freeze in your engine block without it cracking the block. So in an event where you have a bunch of antifreeze and or water in your uh, liquid cooling system, in your engine bay and it getting to the point where it freezes, ice expands a lot more than uh, fluid does. And so if these weren't here, then it could potentially crack your block, cause some damage. And so they have these pre-drilled out ports that have just friction held caps stuck into the engine bay. And then that way, if there's freezing happening right here, it will just force this plug out and you'll just have to replace a plug and some coolant rather than a whole engine. So that is why that was designed that way. But over time, it is typically a kind of steel component and so it does rust and it does eventually fail. I don't really have a specific need to replace these. They all look kind of good, but because this is such a pain in the butt to get to a point where I'm taking off this uh, intake and exhaust for the head gasket repair video that I'm putting together uh, I figured might as well do it while I'm here so I'm going to show you real quick how to pop these out pop the new ones in it's fairly straightforward sometimes just takes a little extra muscle and some room that you might not have so there are different tools to get this done I'm going to try and show you how to do it with some more around the house sort of stuff so the best tool for the job is going to be your standard hammer 16, 16 ounce for this just a claw hammer that is really the most effective way to do it there are people that always mention using a screwdriver usually to get kind of in tighter spaces so you may see me do that the problem is you will always always see that the warning on screwdrivers is not to hit them with a hammer they are not designed to be struck with a hammer some things that are designed to be struck are these sort of crowbars that you can find but I had sort of difficulty getting these to do what I needed them to in the past. I'm hoping I have better luck here and I can validate the fact that you should buy these. I do use them for tons and tons of things. As you can see, it's very scuffed up, but I just haven't had a good track record with actually knocking it and it doing something. So I have two different sizes here. I also have this chisel sort of thing. This is along the same lines as hitting a screwdriver with a hammer also not recommended um, but I don't care if this breaks so I'm willing to crack this a few more times than I would my screwdriver sets. I do have this sort of soft blow um, hammer. This is really good for getting the actual plug in, the new one. Uh, just because it's not metal to metal you're not going to damage it. You can just kind of smack it a little bit harder than you normally would. So this is great for getting them in. Um, we'll see if I use it for getting it out. If all of this fails, you will see different tools because I'm going to end up having to buy them, but stay tuned for that. I'm going to try and use just what you see here. So naturally a pretty tight space here um, on yours because this isn't, I mean, this is a 4.0 on a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Some of you may be watching it specifically for that vehicle. Some of you may just be watching it for the freeze plug in general. If you are doing the Jeep Grand Cherokee, you'll notice that all of this stuff up here, the intake, exhaust, are all gone. Uh, I have very detailed instructions on how to remove that in my head gasket repair video. Um, but essentially, I just want to show you the removal process itself. So I'm going to start with this one just because it is the easiest access. I think some of these other ones I'm going to have to get more creative, but I want to show you just the concept of getting rid of them. So. Here is my normal claw hammer. I'm just gonna try and whack it out of place, okay? So, as you can see, it is a little difficult to stay on target. A couple whacks in your engine isn't gonna be the end of the world. Uh, it is moving ever so slightly, as you can see it's very dirty, but a couple of those hits did actually move it a little bit. I'm going to keep on going. A 
But obviously the hardest part is just hitting it square. Limited space. Every little thing that in interrupts your swing can send it out of place, but it is moving. So it has moved, maybe you can see the ridge line right there, quite a bit on the top. So it is about to go. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get a screwdriver sort of system in there just to get the rest of the way. I think the hardest part is really getting it to get that initial budge, but moving it should be fine. So let me reset up here. Okay, so I'm gonna use the really long crowbar that I had, just cause I wanna try and do it over the camera here. I'm gonna see if I can get any sort of traction, get that last little bit. Yeah, see, I don't know, it just never really seems to, the other thing is I'm not, I don't trust not staring at where I'm going to hit, so not with a real hammer, so let me try the soft blow hammer. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to budge as much as hitting it directly with the hammer, so I am going to go back to the hammer. Essentially what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to get it to eyelid. And uh, so basically, let it focus on me here. So basically it'll turn ever so slightly and you'll be able to grab it and pull it out. So that is the attempt we're making here. Let me move it ever so slightly. There we go. Okay, so a couple hits off camera. It's almost there, it's starting to leak some fluid. See like that. So I drained all this, but there's going to be a little fluid. Alright, trying to get it so it doesn't keep out of focusing here, but as you can see, there's some fluid. I do have a bucket down there, but we're just going to get that last little bit. As you can see, Technically, what they mean by eyeliding, where it just kind of falls out of the way, and you'll grab it with something similar to this and just kind of crank it out. So, let me see, I can get it more like this, put some leverage on it, and there you go. So, funny enough for me, these are in fantastic shape it is dirty on this side I'm hoping that just caught as it was coming out and I don't have a bunch of dirt in my engine but who knows um, but even still these do not last anywhere near as long as the brass brass ones if I could show you that without it being just my hand here uh, these brass ones they last infinitely longer that is why whenever you try and buy a freeze plug they're almost always gonna be brass now we're gonna pop these in. You do not have to put any sort of like adhesive or anything. It's just gonna pop into place. So I kind of get it semi-pressed here. And then with this, I'm gonna try not to make a fool of myself and hit it square so it doesn't pop out. Alright, so I got it started, so now I'm just going to continue working my way in with it. I actually kind of need the room that the camera is in, so you kind of get the gist. I'm just going to be knocking this into place, and we'll go from there. So I showed you a bit on how to do it directly on the engine. There's also a freeze plug on the back of the head for these 4.0 Jeeps. And so 
it gives you a little bit more room to work with knocking the freeze plug out at this level and so this one I did go about it a little bit more barbarically than I think you would need to essentially it was it was pretty it was pretty determined for a plug and so I ended up drilling a hole in it with the intent of getting sort of a um, sort of like a crowbar inside to, to wedge it out I've done that in the past in in tighter situations or if this was all like rusted because essentially in an ideal scenario you're gonna just be hitting it with a hammer and it will eventually slide through because it's all friction held anyways this is supposed to pop out in the event of you know a freeze so it's not supposed to be in there super tight but sometimes they do get wedged pretty good and so i did drill a hole just to get another angle I was ultimately able to to hammer it down when I had the when I had more of like a crowbar that I was then hammering on top I wasn't getting a whole lot of torque into it what I ended up doing is after I drilled this I just started pounding it directly with the hammer and eventually it uh, pushed on through enough I don't know if it's because it you know there was a little give now that I had a hole in the center of it but you know that is an option I've also taken a grinder for a really frustrating one all of this was rusted so it was basically just a ring and so i had to take a grinder just to grind away until i made a c and i was able to kind of condense it spin it and then pop it out so that is this removal i'm going to show you popping a new one in when you have more space um, more room to work essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your new one now it's important to remember again that these are all friction held you're not going to want to put any sort of adhesive on this um, one it could affect its ability to do its job which is to pop out in the event of you know there being too much frozen liquid in this head rather than cracking the whole head it's just going to pop this out um, but also it could affect the seal it's friction held you don't want to interfere with that so the primary process is you're going to get a larger sort of socket. This is a size one. This is a size 24. It's got a little bit lower or a smaller of a diameter, but it's taller so you can get a better grip on it. And then you're gonna need a hammer. You might need like an actual kind of like claw hammer just to get more, but I'm gonna start with this. You're gonna want to kind of hammer it a little bit just until it gets a grip and it's centered before you really start whacking it. Otherwise you might shear it left or right and and then have any problems so i'm going to start it or i'm going to get it started and then i'll show you uh the process when it's a little easier okay so we're going to center it here a little bit kind of walk it into place There you go. Nice and plush. All right, so I showed you on the engine and I showed you on the actual head itself. Freeze plugs, it's fairly easy. It's not anything that's too crazy. It's just a matter of the type of tools that you end up using. Um, like I said, I've, I've had some problematic ones where I drilled it and then I used a sort of crowbar to, to knock it out. Um, in a tight spot that's probably going to be a good bet uh, leverage if anything I like I said I still I'd never really use this with much success to knock them out usually I hit them directly with the hammer in a tight space um, I just usually end up drilling they do have different tools that you can actually get so they have something similar to how I use this but it's actually made of like a really dense plastic and then that way it doesn't gall up 
the new freeze plug as much. I do think that would be worth it. Um, you could probably put a rag or something just to, to soften that impact. But the other tool that they have is it's sort of like a long curved pipe. And then it's got the different sizes that connect into the freeze plug. And so when you end up hammering it, it hits it in more even and straight into the block. I think that might also be pretty good if you're able to rent them in your area. Uh, I wasn't able to rent them in my area and they sold it for three times as much as you can get on, on Amazon. Um, so that would really be kind of a last ditch thing. The other cool thing is they had a way for you to screw it in. And so what you do is you drill like a smaller hole here and then it has these brackets on the outside that kind of hug your, your block. And then as you twist it, it pulls the plug out. I do think that'd be really useful as well. For whatever reason, these tools aren't super heavily available. Maybe not a lot of people are doing this themselves or they've just resigned to using a hammer for everything, which I respect because that's what I did. Um, but either way, hopefully this was helpful to kind of give you an idea of what you're in for if you're looking to do it yourself. It is a fairly straightforward repair. just might take you a little bit of time to, to get it mastered. Um, but in any case, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.